Hello and welcome to episode 5 of Photography with Emery and that would be me. And on today's episode, which is quite packed, we're going to be talking about these things, lenses. Uh, more specifically, we're, we're going to be covering focal length, crop factor, as well as some macro terminology. Let's get started. Before I get into types of lenses, I want to cover what the focal length means. When light rays pass through a lens, they converge into a spot aptly named the focal point. The focal length of a lens is essentially the distance, in millimeters, between that lens and the, that focal point. And I say essentially because the vast majority of lenses are comprised of multiple lens elements, so based on my research, the starting point for measurement may vary. But for what most photographers need to know, lenses with shorter focal lengths have wider field of views than those with long focal length. This is where we begin to see different types of lens categories appear. Shorter focal length lenses are referred to as ultra-wide, super-wide, and wide-angle lenses, whereas lenses that closely mimic what the human eye sees are usually dropped into the normal category, for example, 50 or 55 millimeter lenses. Beyond this range, we start to see lenses with increasingly larger focal length, termed telephoto and super telephoto lenses. Depending on your source, each category of lens lives in a particular focal length range. Another thing to know about lenses is that they usually come in two major flavors, prime and zoom. Prime lenses are those that have a fixed focal length, like a 50mm lens, and zoom lenses have a focal length range such as 50 to 200 millimeters. Each type of lens has its pros and cons and could easily eat up a whole episode, so I've discussed that topic further in my blog. Selecting the type of lens for your needs could also chew up an entire episode, or maybe even two. In a very tiny nutshell though, choosing lenses comes down to factors such as budget, image quality you want from the lens, usually the better ones being more pricey, and special requirements. For example, tilt shift lenses offer perspective correction, useful for architectural shooting. Fast super telephoto prime lenses may be your cup of tea if you uh, shoot uh, wildlife in sports photography. And choosing lenses is further complicated by the type of camera you get. Obscure brands may not have many lenses to offer, whereas others may overwhelm you with their expansive lines. But at this point, you should have a good enough idea about them to seek further advice from your local camera store salesperson. Now, another important topic to understand in regard to lenses is the crop factor. To begin, most digital cameras and digital SLRs have sensors that are smaller than a frame of 35mm film. Second, it's quite common to see and hear the focal length on a digital camera related to its equivalent focal length in 35mm format. Also, I must clarify that the crop factor is dependent on the sensor size and really has almost nothing to do with the lens itself. To visually demonstrate the crop factor, here's an image in this circle that represents what a lens would project onto a frame of film or a digital sensor. Technically this picture would be upside down, but for comfy viewing I've kept it oriented more normally. The black rectangle within this circle represents the piece of an image that would fall onto a frame of 35mm film, whereas the yellow and red rectangles represent sensors at 1.6 and 2 times crop factors respectively. The focal length of the lens in this example is the same for each sensor, or in other words, we're using the same lens in this example. Let's give this lens an arbitrary focal length of 100 millimeters. Now note that the photos produced by the 1.6 and 2 times crop factor sensors appear as if the image is magnified, but really there is only cropping that occurs, no magnification. Using the 2 times crop factor sensor example, you would need a 200 millimeter lens on a 35 millimeter format camera to get an equivalent field of view. Remember, the original lens was 100 millimeters, so times that by the crop factor too, there's your 200. See, it's actually quite simple. So you multiply the focal length of the lens you're using on your digital camera by the crop factor to get the focal length you would need on a 35 millimeter format camera to produce the same results. Depending on the manufacturer and type of digital camera you have, the sensor size and crop factor will vary. And of course there are full frame digital SLRs that have a sensor equivalent in size to a 35mm frame, in which case you have the crop factor of 1. For further information about the crop factor, check out my blog as I've included some links there. For the last topic in this episode, I quickly want to introduce the macro lens. 
Most definitions I've seen define them as lenses that can produce an image of at least half life size, generally expressed as a ratio of 1 to 2, up to about 10 times magnification, or 10 to 1. Magnifications greater than this are generally considered photomicroscopy, in other words, taking pictures through a microscope. Although this topic isn't very difficult, I've seen some novice photographers get a little confused about the ratios. To illustrate how this works, I have a 35mm macro lens that can project an image onto the sensor that is virtually the same size as in real life, a 1 to 1 ratio. My camera has a 4 thirds standard size sensor which physically measures about 17mm in width by 13mm in height. To prove the 1 to 1 ratio, I've simply placed a couple of rulers on a table, got as close as I could with my lens, and took a picture. Voila! Although not absolutely perfect, it's close enough to call this image life size. So the size of the thing that you take a picture of with a 1 to 1 macro lens will be almost exactly the same size as it appears on the sensor. On my blog I've linked to some websites that take this topic further. For example, you can get extension tubes and apply techniques such as actually attaching your lens backwards on a camera that allow for even greater magnifications to be achieved. Thanks for joining me and I hope you've learned a little bit more about lenses. Next week I'm going to be talking about exposure value. Kind of a fine tune for your exposure, uh, controlling your, you know, if it's too light, too dark. I'll show you how that thing works. And remember, check out my blog. I always have supplementary material uh, on it and you'll see it in the credits. And as well, remember to subscribe because that way you can stay up to date with all my videos. Thank you very much. Hope to see you next time.